Hi, everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. If there's ever a parable to be confused about, it's probably this next one, according to Ryan. I actually read it and didn't feel that confused. But anyway, <laughs> today we're reading Luke. Wow. Chapter, we're reading Luke chapter 16. And there are a couple of parables in it, specifically one that is talking about the shrewd or, um, is that the right word? Shrewd manager. Yeah, dishonest the manager. Dishonest manager. That was the other word that was used. And then um, towards the end of the chapter, there's a little portion that would be um, on divorce. And then finally, we talk about the rich man and Lazarus. So lots about money today. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, some of the pitfalls of money as well as the benefits of using money for the kingdom. It's funny reading over this chapter. It is, I think it's a collection of some of the most odd sayings of Jesus. Like? Uh, well, I mean, for example, the the parable of the dishonest manager, and this is widely understood as like one of the more difficult parables to decode, uh, because there is this man who is a dishonest manager, and he is commended for the fact that he is a dishonest manager. So you would not expect Jesus to tell a story where the bad guy is like amazing. And this is not like in the good Samaritan sense where like it's somebody they perceive to be bad, but is actually great. This is like a guy that's actually bad. That's actually bad. Well, because it starts out that he is accused of wasting um, someone's possessions. Correct. Like he's, he's not using money well. So he's showing dishonesty as well as being unwise with uh, finances to begin with. But later on, he tries to like gain back favor with people by using it wisely. And both of those instances gets translated for the ways that the disciples should or should not use financial gain in yeah. their ministry. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple ways you can interpret this. So basically, like, just so you understand the story and always stick around and hear it for yourself or read it for yourself. Um, this guy's in charge of somebody else's wealth. Mm -hmm. And he finds out he's going to be fired. So he goes to three different people and basically, like, cuts down how much they owe and then releases them. In order to gain, like, good graces with them. Something. Post his S current job. So he acts quickly. He's very shrewd, but he cuts the debt and is potentially like stealing from his employer or costing his employer. And so that's what makes this so odd. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple ways to look at this. Um, one is that Jesus is just trying to make a point that this shrewd manager could see the times, understand the times, and acted quickly to bring resolution in favor of himself in light of the times. So the the takeaway would be like you can see the kingdom of god coming so you act quickly to come in line with what the kingdom of god requires so that you are found faithful it seems like a little bit of a stretch uh, but it is one view that like he acted quickly and he was commended for that another view is that he was forgiving the interest on the loans which were not permitted by jewish law in the first place so that view would say this man, like the boss of this guy, was actually acting outside of God's law. And when this man is forgiving the interest that never should have been charged, he was honoring God's law and therefore was shrewd, but also commendable. Uh, another view is that this man is canceling his own commission to try to help people out and because he has canceled his own commission that would have been due to himself, uh, he found favor with these other people and was able to secure a living space for himself when he became unemployed. So he was prepared, he was gracious, and he was found commendable. Uh, take your pick. I don't, I don't know. But I don't know if you tapped on this one at all, but mine seemed pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, another one I heard was just that, he was wrong. So it was like not like the correct the fact that he was being dishonest that is looked upon as like, oh, do this. But it said in my commentary that he was just he was trying to be careful and plan ahead. Yes. So that is like the idea for us, like to be, I don't know, with your finances, to be prepared for like how you can give and like 
hand in hand with that is like the like not the dishonest part of this story. He's supposed to be like ready to help. So that would and be use worldly wealth for the kingdom. So it's like a hand in hand kind of thing. That would be in line with the first view where he anticipated the need and acted quickly to handle it. Okay. So I think I don't know. That seems to make the most sense to me. Those other ones just kind of like cherry. It, it is fairly confusing. It it's pretty odd. It's not like these seed fell on good ground, bad ground, and kind of good ground. <laughs> like, you need roots. Like, it's not like that. It's like, okay, what does he mean? And then he Jesus launches into this command uh, that also, I think, sounds odd. I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into their eternal dwelling. So it's like, hey, use your money to make friends. Um, also seems kind of weird though like because i we have known of and that maybe not super super well but we've known of like several christian people Mm -hmm. that are very well off Mm -hmm. Um, money is not a problem for them and they have used their wealth in a way that has been super helpful Mm -hmm. to many missions that the lord is or has placed in people's hearts or like it's just incredible what has been able to happen because of that um and i don't it's funny because when i actually realized that these people are super well off after i'd met them it was just like i probably would never have guessed that (laughs) so what's interesting about this concept is Jesus then goes on to say you can't have two masters Mm -hmm. and Jesus has Mm -hmm. been making the case that he's only interested in people who will follow only him. It's not that long ago that he was saying, like, you have to hate your wife, you have to hate your kids, you have to hate your parents, you have to hate yourself to follow him. The idea is you must be sold out as a follower of Jesus. You may follow only Jesus. So here Jesus is saying, you you have two options for masters, money or Jesus. You can't serve both. Yeah. And so you must use your money to serve Jesus. Like wealth, it's going away. When you die, somebody else is getting your stuff. But your Mm -hmm. soul will last eternally. So it's important that you use your money to support Jesus, the work of the ministry. And what he says specifically, you use unrighteous wealth to promote eternally meaningful things. And I think that concept flows right into this parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Because with the rich man and Lazarus, you have a rich man who has been known about, like he's been known to serve only himself. And you have Lazarus who has been very poor and to some degree, like must have had some kind of faith and some kind of hope in Christ because now he's at Abraham's side. What's interesting about the Lazarus story or parable is that at the end of it, after the the ruler realizes that he is bound for hell, he is like he was not just, he was not helpful to the man who needed it. Um, he's like, Oh, please just send someone, send someone to tell me. And then in the story, he's just like, Listen, you have the law, you have the prophets, you have Moses. If you don't believe those nothing's going to save you. Uh, I think there's a lot of similarities to the stories of the Gospels that we've been hearing too, where everybody's like asking Jesus for a sign to prove that he is who he says he is. He's like, guys, listen, if you don't believe what the prophet said that I have literally come to fulfill, you have the sign of Jonah. I'm going to be raised in three days. Like, I'm not going to just stand here and be like this circus performer (laughs) of all these things because nothing is going to satisfy what you're you're looking for if you don't already believe based on what has been prophesied. The the final line of Luke 16 is super ironic. He says, he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Mm. This is Jesus speaking. He is in fact going to rise from the dead. Yeah. And he's saying, if you've heard Moses and you've heard the prophets and you don't accept them, it's not going to matter if somebody rises from the dead. Yeah, yeah. Which we know to be true. Because <laughs> so, they're like, wait, what is he even talking about? What's interesting is I think Jesus is making a case. Um, what we would call the Old Testament is all you need. All you need is the Old Testament to convince you who God is 
and how to be obedient to him. Now, we have the New Testament today, and it's very valuable to us. Um, but basically, Jesus is making the case, like, if you read the whole Old Testament, you don't know who God is, you're not going to know who God is. Right. Because, you, like, Jesus is revealed in the Old Testament. Um, we use both together. But it is interesting here how Jesus consistently upholds the law and the prophets mm -hmm. rather than tearing it down and throwing it out. So I think your part for today, I mean, the, the focus today is mostly on money. Um, I love that little line, like, use your money to make friends. Oh um, my that's probably like a twisted way of looking at it. I don't, I'm not going to tell you to use your money to make friends, but use your money to pursue things of eternal value. Yeah. And that is to some degree difficult to do. Like there's people who have a lot, there's people who have very little. Um, it is easy for me to see how, if you're not faithful with just a little bit, you're not going to be faithful with just a lot. Like oftentimes it's like, well, when I have a lot of money, then I'll support something of yeah, eternal value. That's interesting, huh? um, but it does seem to hold up. Like if you're not pursuing eternal value with very little, you're not going to all of a sudden have a change of heart when you have a lot. Yeah. So it's important to use our money um, to build the kingdom, to invest in what God would ask us to invest in because those things last and everything else passes away. Like we live a totally different kind of life. We live with a totally different kind of focus. Mm -hmm. And so we are playing a long game and we want to see our money invested in things that support that long game and not just our consumeristic culture that tells you you need 15 different iPhones. <laughs> So we'll be back again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.